The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is a continuation of Sunday's Old Testament reading from Joel chapter 3. We're looking at verses 13 to 16a right now, where the Lord said first, Swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come trample the grapes, for the winepress is full, and the vats overflow. So great is their wickedness. Then Joel continues, Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon will be darkened, and the stars no longer shine. The Lord will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. The earth and the sky will tremble. My dear friends in Christ, during Holy Week, the days before Jesus was crucified, after he had triumphantly marched into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, well, in Jerusalem, what Jesus did is he talked to his disciples about signs of the end of the age. And he talked about how there would be false Christs, there'd be wars and rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes, pestilences, diseases. Because the Bible talks about Judgment Day and the end of the world, people have often been so very fascinated with trying to figure out when that day would come. Of course, the Bible says, Jesus says, no one can know that day. But people have been fascinated with that. Books have been written about that. This past Saturday, I had someone who asked me, just kind of point blank, with everything that's going on because of COVID-19 and, and all of the other problems that are going on in the world right now, is this it? Is Judgment Day just around the corner. Well, when I'm asked a question like that, what I often like to do is, oh, refer to the fact that my dad, my grandfather, my great-grandfather all were pastors. And I don't know this for a fact, but I would kind of believe that with all of them, as was the case with me, that we probably all began our time as pastors looking at the world and thinking about how bad things sometimes are spiritually in this world, a rejection of God so great that we probably, we probably all began our time as pastors thinking before the time that we'd retire or go to heaven that the Lord would come first. Actually, though, when you look at the situation, you'd say, yes, well, what is true is that the Lord, he could come at any time. He could come before I finish this devotion. He, his coming, it could be way off in the future. We just don't know. So, yes, Judgment Day could come at any time, but the point here as we look at this reading is as, and as we think about Judgment Day, really what we want to realize is that my concern, your concern, isn't so much about when it happens. That's in God's hands. The real question for us is about being ready and being prepared for when that day does come. Well, the Lord says, Swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come trample the grapes, for the winepress is full and the vats overflow. So great is their wickedness. On Judgment Day, there will be the harvest of both believers and unbelievers. Believers will be harvested or taken to heaven. Unbelievers, they will be harvested, harvested or sentenced to their to their eternal punishment. In this verse, we can kind of maybe focus on the, on the Lord talking about unbelievers being harvested to their eternal punishment. 
Well, the Lord said, swing the sickle. Swing the sickle because their time of grace is over. Their time, their opportunity to learn about the Savior, that's over. And he says, the harvest is ripe. They had their chance to learn about the promises of God, but, but they rejected them. Come trample the grapes, crush those who have rejected the promises of God. The wine press is full and the vats overflow. Tragically, there are so many people, multitudes that will reject God and will face eternal punishment. So great is their wickedness. Well, when we think of the great wickedness of unbelievers, oh, what probably is the case is that we might be inclined to just think of their wickedness in terms of what oftentimes this world views as being those gross sins, murder, adultery, homosexuality, abortion, things like that. But actually, when it's talking about their great wickedness, it's talking about all sin. And we can add to that list things like gossip, slander, telling lies, even what people would think of as white lies, that still is lie, it's still a sin. Lies, hatred, anger, greed, lust, all sin. But even as believers, what we tragically have to say is that our wickedness is great too on our own. The Apostle Paul said, there is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. However, the real wickedness of the unbeliever is not this necessarily the specific sins, but the fact that that person has rejected the grace and love of God. And it's that rejecting of God, that rejecting of Jesus the Savior, that's going to separate them from God and from heaven eternally. Joel said, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The multitudes that Joel is talking about here is talking about, well, all people. All people who have ever or will ever live. That's the multitudes here. And what's going to happen on Judgment Day is God will raise all the dead and all people will stand before the judgment throne of, of God. It's going to be a wonderful thing for us for, as believers because by the grace of God, because we've been called to faith, because the Holy Spirit has made us believing children of God, well, what's going to happen is our Savior is going to say to us, come and be with me forever. But Jesus will also say, depart from me forever to those who have rejected him. Joel says, the sun and the moon will be darkened and the stars no longer shine. Oh, there are going to be such great changes in God's creation. The creator, he's going to make this new heaven and new earth, the home of the redeemed. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. And well, when he talks about the sun and the moon and the stars no longer shining, well, for the unbeliever, what that may very well mean is that well, those people will be sentenced to eternal darkness in, in, in hell. But for believers, it has another meaning, and maybe we can look to what it says in the book of Revelation. It talks there that we won't need the sun, moon, and the stars because, well, John tells us believers will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light. Joel says, the Lord will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem, the earth and the sky will tremble. That sounds like such a scary picture, 
But understand it this way. Unbelievers will look at that picture and say, oh no, God has this great power and because I've rejected him, he's going to be condemning, condemning me to eternal punishment. But believers will look at this and say, oh wow, what great power. And God is graciously going to take me to be with him forever in heaven. Thank God for the wonderful way that we can look ahead to judgment day because God the Father gave us Jesus the Savior to be our Savior. And the Holy Spirit has called us to faith in that Savior. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us, who by the grace of God believe in Jesus our Savior, the ability to look forward to Judgment Day with great joy, because through faith we know that whenever that day is, our Savior will be taking us home to heaven forever. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.